How's it going on guys? How are we doing? And welcome to a brand new video tutorial from I'm Pinwis. Today, we're going to be giving a quick introduction into reactive extensions for JavaScript or what is basically called RxJS. So RxJS is basically a library for reactive programming pattern for working with synchronous and asynchronous code, both of them on JavaScript. This is not only available in JavaScript though, you can use it on any other programming language like C, C++, um, I don't know, Java, Scala, Python, many many other places that reactive programming paradigm or pattern can be applied very easily. So it's the main use for managing the states of data fetching or basically handling events on a system. So for example, you need to fetch for like a sequence of data from your server API and um, you, you don't really just need to fetch one single piece of data. You want a sequence of data that you want to execute it one after each other's. Uh, you basically as just you want. So from your server API, you can just register an observable which you know something that can be observed and each time the piece of data gets resolved a notification is going to be emitted or pushed to your observer and an observer in this case is just going to be a simple callback that's a function callback that just takes an argument which is the piece of data is going to be uh, fetched from the server api and once this data has been be fetched it's just going to be like you know put it on the uh, observer for you. So this is how the paradigm works and you know, there's still a couple of things to be covered but this is simply what it's called the RxJS. So also, as I've said the R reactive extension is not only available for JavaScript though you can use it for other programming languages so you want to check the main official website reactivex.io for other platforms and available uh, development environments. So the reactive extension for JavaScript in here why to use RxJS. So the main point of trying to use RxJS in my opinion is you can run both synchronous and asynchronous code on the same machine or in the same context without having to create promises and um, you know do single functions for dealing with synchronous code and so on and so forth. Using observable pattern or even subjects pattern throughout RxJS you can easily run both synchronous and asynchronous code overlap them without any problems or issues. You can also do iterable objects and promises can be also used with, within RxJS so you can easily move from your promises you can easily convert it into an observable and use it within the RxJS context or use it within the RxJS pattern without rewriting the whole code or refactoring your code base and this is super super useful. You can also emit multiple events over time and this is the main point why a lot of people love it and use it because it's actually a stream of data that you know, gets notification over time once this stream is still alive and listening for events and you can emit whatever kind of events. And also there is a larger set of operators to work with like standard data types so yeah the operators can help you a lot either for easily creating observables or observing observables or pretty much you can just do in middle operators for dealing or manipulating your uh, data for the observables. Now let's just take a quick look of what an observable is. An observable, a lot of people when they hear this name they feel like a little bit overwhelmed, they, they don't understand what it is. Well it's basically super super simple, I just I missed the point in here so observe any object and react up and changes and um, yeah th this is just pretty much all the points I'm just, just trying to say here. Now if we take a look on the observer, this uh, paradigm or this diagram I got it from the main official web page so the RxJS observer is just basically uh, you can take it as a normal function or uh, no objects since both of them um, you know have the same context on JavaScript so you can just tell it to observe an object and once any changes happens throughout the time to this particular object this observable is going to emit event to the observer and the observer as I've said before is just like a callback so you can just imagine emitting events on, on using the event emitter on the Node.js events pretty much system so once over time in there you can just you can of course emit events but 
they can have the same shape or something but on the observer you can emit as many events as you want you can also have the complete and the error events if there is any problems and clearly seen here whenever you emit something the flip in this case represents our observable and uh, throughout the time in here this is just the line that goes from the left to the right represents the timeline of the application running so you can emit anything you can emit for example star and it goes right into it and it goes to the observer uh, and the other case so for at the at some point you want to just not get rid of it so for some reason the observer terminates the abnormally with an error of course you're going to get the error status or if everything goes right and um, your observable gets emitted all the notification needed it is going to complete and the dotted line in this case going to mean like the transformation has been successfully applied and you have completely um, or successfully finished doing the job of the observable so this is pretty much what it is you can just go in and see more about this on the official web page but you can just you know keep watching this we're going to be looking on the code and see how things work so let's just jump right into and get started with rxjs so this is the official web page for the reactive x and actually available for all platforms so you can select you know whatever programming language you want and you can use but for specifically using it with javascript so since we are actually having a javascript story in this case so you can just go to rxjs.dev and you can find this in here you can either just take a look on the github repository but there's also a really cool uh, API documentations underneath in here if you want to check them out. But let's just go ahead and jump without further ado into our code in here. And let's just simply start by taking a look of what an observable is and how we can work with it. So now just, just simply we need to install RxJS. So we need to just open up a terminal and I'm going to do npm install RxJS. And there's also extensions for RxJS but the main minimal in the bare components or the main components in here to install is actually the rxjs uh, library so just do install rxjs dash save and you click it and it's just going to be installing for you it's not that much of a huge you just have uh, all the needed components for you to run rxjs on your application and here i'm using node.js to run this of course the browser does support that without any problems but without further ado just use node.js in here and it works with it pretty much fine, just for the tutorial's sake, as I mean. Now let me just go ahead and do RxJS and import it really quickly. So I'm going to do RxJS and import this using require. Now this RxJS is going to import the global thing, so all the functions, classes, objects, and error types and everything is going to be put inside of that. So this is actually going to play a role as a global variable. To be honest, so I'm just gonna use this. So firstly, to create an observable, and as I've talked before, an observable is just something that reacts over time. Whenever you give it, um, you know, like you tell him to emit an event, and he emits an event, and you can just tell it, for example, to go in and watch a specific object, like an array or something, and you can use it throughout operators. But let's start simply and create an observable. So I'm gonna do a cost, and I'm gonna do uh, this is gonna be my observable. So this is the bare minimum thing and I'm gonna do new rxjs dot observable the old pattern has a static function that pretty much allows you to create this but the new pattern you need to initialize this using the constructor and the new keyword so pretty much just that and here it takes a function so a function it takes a subscriber a subscriber is pretty much means is the observer so the guy or the object that is currently observing the current observable so you're just going to pass through this object so you can have control over it and you can do whatever you want with it so i'm just going to have the subscriber you can either call it subscriber or observer um it's the same thing it doesn't really that much of a uh, mirror so we got the subscribe in here and throughout the subscribe object if you try to type this what we can have you have a couple of things you've got the main thing is actually emitting with the next method so the next method what it does it emits an event or a push notification to the uh, observer so the observer is going to receive uh, some kind of an event on his callback on the next callback of course we're going to be registering and uh, you can emit how much ever you want not only one not only two you can you know uh, emit as many as you want and you can finally complete it or you can just finish it with an error so as you can see there's a next an error method and a complete method so error and a complete 
either one of them has to happen it can't happen both at the same time for the next you can emit many next ones and emit many data to the observer and finally you can finish it with an error if there's any errors happening on behind the observer or any of the other kind of things you can just complete it successfully without any problems so here we can just go to emit let's say uh, hello and you can of course emit how many um, data as you want not you're, you're not actually controlled by anything as you might want to say as for example promises you only be able to emit one single thing once the promise is resolved and resolved with a single value or either rejected with an error and this is completely different this is what you mean by an observer so you can emit many types of data and not only one single time so for example you can give it like uh, 15 or something you can give it a boolean an object that doesn't really matter and here like uh, you can give it like an id one and this is my object and finally as i've said you need to either finish it with a complete or an error I'm gonna just put the complete in here and means we have successfully completed the observers. This is how basically the observer works. And this is a custom observer or pretty much an observable. And um, this is how you could create it. You can hear like between this and this code, you can for example, like your to do and fetch data from the uh, server API. And you can do, for example, uh, using a get HTTP request, you can go to the URL and get the data. And once the data is gonna get, it's just gonna submit a next function and um, the data is gonna be manipulated to the observer really, really easily. Now to, this is how I've created an observer. This is not gonna be running and they mostly called as a cold observables. So what I mean by cold is just like simply they're not going to be running until you subscribe to them and subscribing basically means you're going to be observing them or registering an observer for a specific observable so this is pretty much what it means and here i've got my observable i'm just going to do so the subscribe function or subscribe method since we are actually in an object context so we got the subscribe method and here it takes an observer as clearly pretty much seen here and there's actually a couple of implementations all of them are deprecated it's going to be removed in the next versions but what you want is the last one where you can just provide a next callback an error callback and a complete callback so when you call next this callback is going to be executed when you call an error in here in, in inside of the implementation of the observable uh, when you call an error this the error is going to be happen and when you call complete it's going to be happening in there and completed errors i've said they only happen one single time on the um, you know the running time or the timeline of the observable they can't run both uh, like multiple times they only run once so we've got the next in here and this is going to have the value we're going to be emitting from here we're going to receive it right over here so i can do like console.log uh, next and you can just put, put the value inside of here i can have the error if there are any errors so pretty much i'm just going to do console dot error and pretty much you're going to have the error and finally what we can probably do is the complete the complete doesn't take anything so i just put that and you can do dot console.log completed successfully or something and uh, there we go so we can hear after subscribing and after running the code I'm just gonna save this just an automatic learning for you so you can clearly see it is next this hello and then it submits hello on the next callback this 15th and there's pretty much the next and with an object that you've submitted right over here and finally just like completes and it calls this callback which means completed successfully so this is basically what observable is and how you can use it but if you don't call the subscribe right over here it's not going to be running and it's just like going to be a cold observable so you need to first call subscribe like attach an observer to it first so we can run otherwise it won't run in any way and it just like stays in implementation so this is what you mean by a cold observable in the context now about observables what you can do is pretty much you can dispose or like you say here the observable is going to be running it's going to emit the next function it's going to emit the other next function so on and so forth and then it's going to emit the complete function as clear as in here there is only synchronous code so this executes before as you put it in here the you know the um the order of the execution of the lines of functions in here they are the same execution here there's a means they are synchronous but how we can run asynchronous code. So just by putting asynchronous code in here, like you put a fetch API from a server, or simply you can just do this by uh, using the set timeout. So you can use set timeout and you can tell it after two seconds. So the set timeout in here is gonna do, it's just gonna do subscriber. And 
and um, it's gonna call a next. So next, so after um, two seconds, and here I'm gonna just be running this after two seconds. It's gonna be run after two seconds, but what you need is here you're completing it. So before this gets running, the complete is gonna be run and the actual observable is gonna be stopping. So you need to just copy this and make sure like once you run the last execution of the next function, you just like call the complete because calling the compute will dispose um, the observable and you won't be able to call next again. That's why I mean you need to call this after calling the last next Otherwise, this not going to be executed whatsoever So I'm just gonna save this right here clearly see we get all of those and we get after two seconds Then it completes. so pretty much we put the code right over here right in the middle But it is running asynchronously as you clearly see observables can also be running asynchronously without any problems now there's all types of observables like subjects which is a special kind of observables and this subject what it means is actually like you can um, usually sh share the same behaviors like the difference main difference between an observable and a subject they actually share the same behavior of emitting next function notifications and the complete and error statuses but the only difference is that subjects can can be observables and observers at the same time and which means they can listen and react for emitted event values why they can also emit values on their own so those are what subjects uh, the, the, the other thing is that subjects are hot which means they can even run before subscribing to it so once you create the subjects it's just gonna be start running immediately without subscribing and here as, as we have seen the observable is actually a cold thing so once you subscribe it's gonna start running but on the other hand the subject only gets running once you actually create and initialize this so I'm just gonna see a subject in here I'm just gonna create a comments and I'm gonna be putting right over here and let me just gonna comments all of this code in here so um, since we're just gonna be not needing it anyway now for simply creating a subject it's super simple it's not something really complicated it's just a special kind of an observable so we're gonna do a const I'm gonna do my uh, subjects in here and I'm gonna create a new using rxjs.subjects. So the subject in here takes nothing, so it doesn't have the same context as putting um, a subscriber in here and put a call back and then you can define whatever your observable it will be able to do. Now this one is actually can play both roles as I've said. So you can play a role of an observable and it can also play a role of an observer. So this is pretty much what a subject is. And this, this is the difference between an observable and a subject. Now we can do uh, my subjects and it can emit a next function. Of course, in theory, see there's a next available in here and you can start emitting anything. But let me just say like this value um, is pushed. So for example, before subjects runs so the subjects won't even receive this because the subject is hot so once you create the instance in here and once you emit an event to it this is going to emit the event it doesn't really care if there's a subscriber or if there's an observer uh, listening to the subject or if it does not have that so in this case we don't have any subscriber so this is not going to be received whatsoever in this case we're just going to try to do a subscribe function to it and for subscribe function i'm just going to grab this i don't want to waste a little bit of time so I'm just gonna do my subjects and subscribe to it. I'm gonna have the next. I'm gonna complete successfully the same. Um, whenever you subscribe to it, as I've said, in this time it plays a role of an, an observable, and in this case, it plays a role of an observer. So you got the point of what I'm trying to say in here. And they're just gonna try to emit another one by after listening to it, after subscribing to the observable, this my subject observable, we're gonna just do um, this value gets received and it's gonna try to control s it's clear see we get this value gets received which is you know we submitted this or emitted this after subscribing but we're not getting the one we are emitting before subscribing that's why as I've said that subjects start running once they initialize them in here they, they immediately start running so once you push um, like a notification or emits in here a value it's gonna be like pushed it doesn't really care if there is a subscriber or not but on the other hand once you subscribe to an observable 
only then it's going to be start running as we have seen if we just remove the subscribe from here like we you know remove the subscribe but we still initialize and create the instance uh pretty much of the observer in this case it's just not gonna be running anyway so it just like stays cold and um you know stays underneath the hood it's not going to be running whatsoever so this is the main difference what i'm trying to say right over here there's also other types of subjects which allows you to pretty much manipulate specific data. So there is actually the uh, reply subjects and this reply subject what it does it actually can allow you to get the last emitted value. So once you just subscribe to it every single one every single observer that subscribe to the my subjects will be able to get the last emitted value on the stream so the last emitted value in this case is would be this type of string so once we subscribe to it we will be able to get this string then we can get this one of course but let's say we want to emit uh, another one in this case and uh, this is received and as I've said, the reply subjects only gets the last emitted value, which is this one, right before we subscribe, and it push it, and the subscribe is gonna receive it throughout the uh, the next handler, and we can just go ahead and do it. So here you see, if we save it, we got this values pushed before our subject runs, and we got this received, and we got also. Um, this gets received and clearly see we got all of them running because we are just pushing them before we subscribe uh, Whatsoever then the reply object is going to be pushing right over here. There's also other kind of things like uh, The behavior objects so the behavior subjects I mean can take a as a parameter as an additional to the reply subjects pretty much the same thing to reply subjects but here it can take an initial value to get emitted first so this initial value you can give it like uh, initial something something like this and you can start working with it but in this case you won't be getting it anyway so you see we got this is received the value gets received we only get the last one received and we got this value um, gets received whatsoever. So after we subscribe to it, we get the last emitted value because it's a behavior object, and we get the one after we subscribe to it, after we emit it pretty much. And the reply subject is going to get you all the values before subscribing, it's going to be emitted for you right over when you subscribe. But in the other case, uh, for the behavior subject, you can specify specify an initial value in this case. Let me just gonna move this, uh, the subscribe. So let me just over this, select it, and move it right up there. So we'll be able to get the initial value and all of the values in this case. But let me just gonna try to like comment this code, so it won't run anyway. So after saving this, we get initial because you know we're specifying this to be the initial value to get pushed to whatever observer gets subscribed first then we get the value gets received you can subscribe how much ever um, you know all those subscribe handlers and stuff and they still can be working the same way as it is in here and the other important parts of ArcGIS are the operators. So ArcGIS operators are like, you know, a bridge for creating and quickly create, creating uh, observables without, you know, having to deal with all of these callback functions and stuff and creating them from the beginning. Now, you can just go in and use operators and they can do the job for you. For example, you've got an array. So let's say in here, uh, in this case, we got a const uh, my data and it's gonna have an array so it got for example high then it got 15 then it got you know ice cream or something like this I don't know something like this something ridiculous some data you've got inside of your array and what you want you want to just like register an observable that listens for every single value um, or every single item on this array and pretty much emits it so to do so we're gonna use the rxjs there's an operator called from so the from operator takes any kind of iteratable object like an array or it can take a promise or it can take like a generator function which is returning an iterator of course you can you can learn more about this on the mdn documentations why not but the main part in here you can give it the my data and it's going to return to you as uh, an observable so you can subscribe you can use the pipe method so the subscribe we can just go ahead and do the subscription in here uh, really quickly I'm just going to copy this so we can just going to use subscription and it's going to pretty much work fine so we can save this run it again as clear as we get high we get 15 we get ice cream and so on and so forth but 
quite easy in the from uh, operator it takes this data type the array data type it converts it for us into a, uh, an observable then you can subscribe to it and you can use it easily now let's say we got this array and um, we pretty much you know we've got this data but what we want I want to just get rid of the ice cream at the end in here or I want to add like instead of like returning a single item from this case we're gonna return an object instead so here where it comes the pipe method so the pipe method where it takes you can just pipe through it um, the before running subscribe of course you can manipulate the data in here and after you return the subscribe is gonna re like receive the new return data from the pipe method what I mean by this, you can also use other operators in this case. So for the pipe, it takes pretty much a function and you can take you know, the source observable and then you can uh, return the data. But what I want is specifically, I'm gonna use the map operator. So the map operator, I'm gonna get it from the operators because I will be able to get the uh, RxJS from operator from, from the exact you know rxjs library in here from, from the global variable because it's very important that's why it's being included there but to access other available operators what you can do um, i'm going to just you know use the destructor in here i'm going to call it map and uh, i'm going to call this there's also a map to so i'm going to be requiring do require rxjs forward slash operators so the operators folder has all of the available operators for you so you can easily quickly use it. The map operator, what it does, it takes like the value that you're gonna be receiving and once you return something, you can return whatever. So I'm gonna say uh, V, pretty much like say data or item, it's gonna be V and uh, let's say exists, true. So I'm gonna return an object like this um, in, in this case, of course, I'm just going to wrap this using parentheses since this is a function and once we return this, this, this object that we are returning for every single item on the list in here on the array. So this object is going to be forwarded into the subscribe and the V every single time is going to equal this object. So we can just going to do a uh, console log through see if can just take a look. There's the item and it exists on the V value. So let's see this. I'm gonna both get an object every single time, like item high exists true, and item 15, the same thing over and over again. Just by using these cool, awesome operators, you can do a plethora of things, of course, and you can you can do plenty of things. There's plenty, plenty of operators. You can just go and check out the documentation. The other operator I really do like and really do enjoy working with is actually the RxJS concat operator and the timer operator. So let's say here I've got observable. Uh, pretty much timer one. So the timer one in here, what it does, I'm gonna use the RxJS dot timer method, and this one is gonna create for me an observable that you know gets evaluated after a certain amount of time. Like you can imagine this as a set timeout, but it is returning an observable instead of a function. So the timer in here. So I'm gonna say every uh, every a second. So you're gonna be just doing. Uh, I'm gonna be piping it. So I'm gonna use the map pipe. I'm gonna do map to, and every single time you're gonna be mapping it to high, all right. And I'm gonna use another uh, custom one in here. So I'm gonna do timer two. The timer two in this case is gonna have two thousand, which means two seconds. And I'm gonna have to hello. So after a second, it's gonna be emitting high, and after two seconds, it's gonna be emitting hello. I use this operator because it maps whatever value comes from here into hello. So the final value is gonna be up from this observable is gonna be hello, and after two two seconds, it's just gonna complete. So it emits of only one single value. To run this, of course, we need to subscribe to it. So for subscribing, I can just give it um, here. Uh, pretty much you can do subscribe or I'm gonna use the concatenate function. So instead of the from I'm gonna do concat and concat takes as many operators as you want but it runs them on order. So it runs the timer one and once it finishes it starts the timer two and once it finishes and so on and so forth. So it runs all the observables given between parentheses in here in order one by one. So I'm gonna do timer one and of course timer two 
once it completes the timer 2 is going to be running and so on and so forth so this is how it pretty much works and i can just go ahead and um, i'm piping in here so we're going to get the same result as pretty much we're doing so starting node.js we get item hi after a second after two seconds we get item hello and we got exist here because we're using pipe so that's pretty much it for RxJS. Uh, there's plenty of things, plenty of operators. You can just go ahead and check out the documentation. I hope you really guys enjoyed the video tutorial as I did enjoy making it. And thank you guys for watching. I really, really hope you guys have enjoyed. Uh, make sure to check out that and you know request any other video tutorials you would like in the comments below. See you guys in the next video tutorial.